Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum ji. This is the last video on Bayesian learning framework. Here we will focus on uh, a very brief introduction to Bayesian networks. When we define Bayesian learning, we used Bayes theorem to reformulate maximization of posterior PDF into maximization of a likelihood times prior. And when we used, uh, when we formulated naive Bayes, uh, when we carried out naive assumption, so that was based on the fact that estimation or computation of this joint distribution requires enormous amounts of data. So this likelihood here is a joint distribution. And if you want to compute this joint distribution during the training stage, so that will require enormous amounts of data. And we simplified using naive Bayes assumption and that assumption was that the features are independent. Uh, although uh, this naive Bayes assumption uh, works very well in practice, this is too simple to hold. And uh, we generalizes the idea of naive Bayes to model distribution over groups of variables uh, with more complex conditional independence relationships. And we generalize this idea of naive Bayes using, using uh, what we call Bayesian network. A Bayesian network is a graphical model which we can use to represent probabilistic relationships among inputs and labels. In fact, among inputs and or labels, because when we define Bayesian network, we do not make a distinction between inputs and label. So the overall idea is that a Bayesian network consists of a collection of conditional probability distributions such that their product is a full joint distribution of all the variables. You can also, in fact, a, a naive base is also a Bayesian network in which there is a very, very simple independence relationship between the features. And that relationship is all the features are independent or each feature is contributing towards the label independently. Is each feature is connected to the label independently. So we generalize this idea and we define a Bayesian network, which is a graphical model for representing conditional independence relationships between different variables and labels, between different features and labels. Okay, before you form formally define a Bayesian network or before we uh, move further, let me show you one example of a Bayesian network uh, which has been proposed in the literature for liver disorder diagnosis. So this is a Bayesian network uh, which uh, was proposed in this, in this work, research work. Okay, so how do you interpret this? So we have a liver disorder here. Okay. So you can see this, the Bayesian network is a graph, right? In fact, it's a directed graph. So we have, uh, we, the nodes are connected uh, in, in using a directed edges or using directed arcs. So how do you interpret this? So if you have gallstones here, right? Interpretation would be that if you have gallstones, uh, this, this can be a cause and effect could be liver disorder. And if you have liver disorder, you can have uh, a body hair loss or you can have abnormal levels of LDH or AST, right? Or you can have uh, abnormal levels of alkaline phosphate and due to which you can have jaundice. Right? So this, this is how you interpret it, right? Uh, in addition to this graph, we should also have some numbers that must be defining the probability of having a liver disorder given you have gallstones, right? So this is, this is in fact what Bayesian network is. Okay, let's formally define a Bayesian network. A Bayesian network has two things, directed ASXA graph, which we called DAG. So it, it must be directed. So it's a graph which is directed and ASXA. Exactly means there are no loops or there are no uh, closed paths in a graph. And 
for a given directed acidic graph, there should be conditional probability tables uh, that are defining the relationship between different nodes of the graph. So busy network can be visualized by drawing a directed graph, nodes and edges. In fact, we have directed edges. We represent variables in the form of nodes. And these nodes can be labels or these nodes can be features. As I said earlier, we do not make any distinction between features and labels during the training. And we treat uh, the same way, both the features and labels. We represent the relationship or dependence between the variables using edges, or we can also call them arcs. Nodes and edges represent the conditional independence relationships between the variables in certain ways. And, and we will see very shortly uh, how do we um, define the conditional independence relationship between the variables using the structure of the graph. Uh, th th this is an important concept. Uh, we may also represent causality in the Bayesian network. So in the previous uh, graph on liver disorders. So we had arrows, we have directions and directions were indicated in a way that we have uh, a cause and effect indicated in the network. So we had gallstones, gallstone can be a cause for liver disorder. So liver disorder is an effect. So we can also represent uh, causality uh, in the graph in the Bayesian network. Causality means the effect of one variable on the other. So incorporating causality uh, can help us defining a structured graph. Right? So we can establish a cause and effect relationship in the network. Okay, let me start with a very simple example uh, just to illustrate these concepts. Uh, as I said earlier, a network is, we have a directed acyclic graph and conditional probability table. Assume that we have this Bayesian network. How do you interpret this? So there is no edge between C and D. Absence of edge indicates independence or conditional independence. If you see, there is no edge between A and C and there is no edge between A and D. But there is an edge between A and B. So event A influences B and event B or variable B, okay, I should not call them events. Right. So we have uh, these nodes here and these nodes are random variables. So we can, we, can, we can say that A influences B and B influences C. And therefore, A and C are not independent because A uh, influences on B and B influences on C. Right. And therefore, A and C are dependent. A and C are not independent. But A and C are conditionally independent, given B. If you have information about B, if you know B, whether B is, for example, B is a, a Boolean variable, B is true or not. If you have information about B, then C and A are independent. Right? Or we can say A and C are dependent, but A and C are conditionally independent given B. Right? So we have these directed edges in the graph. So using this directed edge, we can say we simply use a graph nomenclature that B is a parent of C and D. And similarly, A is a parent of B and direction uh, of the arrow, direction of the edge indicates the causation. And so A is a cause and B is an effect. B is a cause, C is an effect, right? Uh, and so this is, uh, we have directed acyclic graph and we should also have a conditional probability, uh, sorry, conditional probability table for each node. 
each node has a conditional table that quantifies the relationship with the parent node. If we assume that each variable here in the graph is Bernoulli random variable, so it's a Boolean variable, it can take zero or one. How do you define conditional probability table for say node B? So we must define probability of B given A, right? Probability of B given the distribution of the parent. So we can say, so this CPT, this conditional probability table defines uh, probabilities for node B. For node A, we do not have any parent. And therefore, we only define probabilities for node A, not the conditional probabilities. So for node A, we can have such conditional probability table. For node C, we should have information probability of B given, sorry, probability of C given B, because C is a child of a B or B is a parent of C. Okay. We have probability of C given B. This is a CPT for node C. And similarly for node D, we have probability of D given B in the form of table. Right? So we can say that a graphical representation of a network encodes certain conditional independence relationships between the variables. In fact, it is an efficient representation of the joint probability distribution of the variables. If we have Bayes network representation, we can more compactly and efficiently represent the joint probability distribution, especially if the graph does not have too many edges. If the graph has less edges, it simply means that these variables, many of them are conditionally independent of others given some evidences and we can represent the joint distribution more efficiently. To illustrate this, uh, let me, let, let, let us compute the joint distribution for this example. Okay, so for example, we want to compute probability of A is equal to one, comma B is equal to one, C is equal to one, D is equal to one. So we want to compute this joint probability. So using the concept of conditional uh, conditional probability, I can write, I can reformulate this as probability of A is equal to one times probability of B, C, D given A is equal to one, right? So no assumptions. But if we exploit the independence between C and D, so there's no edge between C and D. We can say C and D are independent. Furthermore, if we also exploit the, in, the conditional independence between A and C, so C and A are conditionally independent given B. Similarly, D and E are conditionally independent between given B. And therefore, I can express this probability uh, by further decomposing probability of B is equal to one, given A is equal to one times probability of C is equal to one, B is equal to one, given A is equal to one, B is equal to one, right? And since when B is given, C and A are independent, so I can have these four probabilities, right? So I have exploited the structure of the Bayesian network, the information in the structure of the Bayesian network to express my joint distribution in the form of these conditional distributions. And if we use the table, we can compute this joint probability uh, by just simply using the values from the table. Right? Okay, so building on this example, let's quickly formulate uh, a Bayesian network or the idea of Bayesian networks. So if you have uh, D variables, uh, these could be D features. Uh, by exploiting network structure, we want, okay, in Bayesian, we want to compute 
this joint distribution probability of x1, x2, xt. But exploiting structure of the Bayesian network, I can express this as a product of conditional distributions. Right? So probability of node i given parents of node i. And we have a number of such conditional distributions. And when you, when you multiply all such for, for each node, we get a joint distribution. We can say we have a structured and compact representation of the joint distribution in the form of Bayesian network. In fact, Bayesian network encodes this special structure and compact representation. In Bayesian networks, we can have different types of independences. Uh, first independence is when uh, all the nodes are mutually independent. We, have, we, can, we can say we have a marginal independence. So exploiting marginal independence, uh, we can write a joint distribution as simply a product of individual distributions. And in fact, we use this concept uh, in the development of knife based classifier. Alternatively, we can have such representation of three nodes. We can have such connections in the network for three nodes. So this is conditionally independent effects. It simply means probability of A, B, C would be given by probability of B given A, probability of C given A times probability of A. So B and C are independent for each other. Or we can have this. This is, we have one node and we have two causes moving towards one node, directing towards one node. Or we can say we have independent causes. So B and C are independent. For this configuration, we can express probability of A, B, C as probability of A given B, C times probability of B times probability of C. So B and C are independent, right? Uh, if we use this structure and I ask you that given x1, x2 to xd as features of our classifier and y is the label of my classifier, can we represent a naive based classifier in this graphical form in the form of Bayesian network? Maybe you can pause the video and you can draw it very quickly. So this is a graphical representation of a naive based classifier. The idea is probability of y given x would be simply a product of individual distribution, individual probabilities. This is likelihood. So a joint distribution probability of x even y is equal to the product of individual distributions. And this is the graphical representation, right? So y is a cause and you can have x1, x2, xd. These are the possible features that are representing y, right? Okay, once we have a Bayesian network, uh, we can talk about uh, prediction or inference using Bayesian network, right? We can, once we represent the local probability tables, we can use BaseNet for making predictions. And we can simply compute posterior probabilities given some evidence. Mathematically, it means we want to compute probability of y given x, where x represents the evidence, for example, features, and y is the query variable, uh, for example, label. Okay, what do we mean by some given some evidence? Evidence means some of the nodes you know the value of the nodes and in order to in do inference efficiently, we can exploit probabilistic conditional independence that is encoded in the Bayesian network. In general, for a given Bayesian network, exact inference is intractable. Uh, it's NP hard, it's computationally uh, inefficient. For Bayes network, which have some special structure, we, we can have exact inference tractable, 
but uh, most of the times uh, for, for, for an arbitrary Bayesian network, exact inference is intract intractable or it's NP hard. Uh, when exact inference is intractable, we can use some approximate techniques such as Monte Carlo methods or, uh, or we can make some assumptions, for example, a naive base assumption uh, to carry out inferences. Uh, we will not talk about uh, these advanced methods uh, here, uh, as this is beyond the scope of this course. But at least you should know that uh, in general, exact inference is intractable. Uh, if you want to carry out exact inference on a given on arbitrary Bayesian network, we can make some assumptions or we can use some approximate, approximate methods such as Monte Carlo. Right. Okay, let's very quickly talk about learning of a Bayesian network. If you have a Bayesian network, how do we learn given the data? So we have talked about that if you have a Bayesian network, if you have a structure of Bayesian network, a graphical representation of a network, how we carry out prediction or inference. But how do we carry out learning of, of conditional probability tables? Or how do we learn structure of a Bayesian network? Okay. So structure means you have nodes and edges. If structure is given uh, and you have training data, we learn conditional probabilities using the training data. If the structure is not even given, we use domain knowledge in conjunction with the training data to learn both the structure and conditional probabilities using the data. Again, we will not go into detail uh, because this is, in fact, we can offer uh, a one semester long course uh, on Bayesian learning, as I said earlier. But, uh, but the idea here is uh, to give you uh, a brief introduction uh, to the topic. And maybe uh, if you find some interest, uh, uh, you can read it further. Okay, uh, with this, uh, we come to the end of this introduction to Bayesian network uh, and overall Bayesian learning framework. Uh, moving forward, we will start with uh, logistic regression. Thank you, Ji. I love this.